Welcome to the Somatic Coaching Academy podcast with Ani and Brian. Join us as we explore the art and science of trauma-sensitive somatic practices and tools to strengthen your practice as a coach, therapist, or holistic professional. Master the art of motivating even the most challenging clients when you'll understand how to tap into and unlock your client's complete holistic intelligence. If you want to learn the most cutting edge, research supported skills for personal and professional mastery, you've come to the right place. Let's get this conversation started. Hi, and welcome to the Somatic Coaching Academy podcast. We're really excited that you're joining us for episode 27, The Difference That One Yes Can Make. Hey there, Brian. Hey, Ani. Hi. This is, of course, episode or episode number four in a four-part series, or part four of our four-part series of how to make pivotal life decisions. Yeah, it's such a fantastic topic. It's one that people ask us about all the time. It's one that our potential students grapple with making decisions. It's one that our current students that are students on program grapple with. And it's one that our graduates, especially of the SBMC program, really know how to navigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I love, I love talking about this. Um, so the difference one yes can make, I love this title because it's really true, Brian. Everything can change from a powerful and pivotal decision. And so up to this point, if this is the first uh, part of this ep series that you're catching, make sure you go all the way back to part one and follow it all the way through. Because everything that we've talked about up to this point in time has gotten us here. We've, we've <laughs> talked about uh, when we make decisions that keep us small and and or we don't change at all. We've talked about how the universe always says yes. We've talked about clues to when to say yes. How do we know that this is the universe's opening the shortest path to me becoming who I've always wanted to be and who I've meant to be in this world rather than who I'm supposed to be in this world. And we've talked about the natural laws and how the natural laws interweave with this topic. We've done some really cool natural law stuff. Yeah. So if when you, when you understand the natural laws and you understand how to make choices and decisions in accordance with the natural laws, you experience really more peace in your life, more peace not only while you're making the decision, but peace on the other end of the decision, even if things on the other end of the decision get hard, you're still at peace with it. So you we're lacking, letting go of regrets. We're letting go of um, those, I guess, regrets is the best way to think about it. It's, it allows you to live in peace. It's not a peace that you are in a room that the door is closed and locked and you're sitting on a cushion mm -hmm. and meditating kind of peace because that's not a peace that lives. That's not a peace that mm -hmm. is alive in the world. It's a peace where you can walk throughout the world and have peace and still live life because life comes with challenge and opportunity and external things and internal things and all the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So today we are going to talk about another natural law called the law of receiving, the law of receiving. Now we want to read a little uh, uh, paragraph out of one of my favorite books, Working with the Law by I, Raymond Hollywell. I can tell it's one of your favorites. It's all, um, all tattered, banged yeah, up. all tattered and banged up and highlighted and <laughs> underlined and all that kind of stuff. All right, so just settle in for a moment and just open up your ears and open up your mind and just let this few sentences settle in for you. True desire represents the urge of life seeking fuller expression. And it's kept alive by continuous expectation of its fulfillment. Let's just break that down for a moment. What's true desire? True desire is, we talked about this a couple episodes ago, I was just thinking about you. I was praying and meditating for a solution and you called me. So synchronicity. Synchronicity, and right. They're, they're followed with, that, that desire is followed with, it feels like something. It's not a meh. There's a longing. There's a there's a, a feeling. There's a charge. There's a charge associated with it. Or for me, that true desire of God. I really want to go. I really want to be trained in this thing. I really want to be 
have a training in Qigong and Tai Chi. And, and it just, it would wake me up at night. It would come back to me every single day. It was like, I, I could, couldn't shake it off. And it, can, it was stuck. Yeah. It can show up in other people too. Is like those people who are like, ah, I just wish I was doing that. I wish I was doing like what you've been doing. Or, I've always wanted yeah. to do that. I can't stop thinking about it. And yeah. so that's true. That's what we're talking about true desire. So now true desire represents the urge of life, law of more life. We talked about the law of more life, that the universe is expanding. The universe always says yes. So something we have true desire for is the universe working through us to expand. That's, that's what's happening. Now, and that's, and that's the urge of life seeking fuller expression in the world. That's what the sentence says. The true desire represents the urge of life seeking fuller expression. That's life wanting to express itself through us, through our desires. And this is kept alive by the continuous expectation of its fulfillment. I know it's going to happen someday. I know it's going to happen someday. I know it's going to happen someday. We keep that urge alive by expecting, by knowing, by knowing it's going to happen. Yeah, positive expectation. A positive expectation. Okay, that's the first thing. It's sentence. coming. It's, it's, it is coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Yeah. Now, we've talked about an episode or two ago how we can get stuck in that place, though, too. We get stuck in that place. So it's going to happen. Yeah. I know it's going to happen someday, but we're still making decisions to play small. Especially when we don't recognize the opportunity. Mm -hmm because it doesn't show up like we think it does, or it looks a little bit different, or there's some kind of perceived loss associated, associated with, with it. it. Yep. Yeah, for more on that, visit the most previous episode. Yeah. Right? We talked about that a whole bunch. Okay, now, here's this is key, critical. It brings to us ways and means for its manifestations. The principle explains no desire is felt until the supply is ready to appear. No mind can be conscious of a need or of a desire unless the possibility of its fulfillment already exists. So within that desire has the ways and means of its fulfillment. It, that's not separate. It's included in it. It is included. Just how the acorn knows how to become the whole oak tree. It's, in, it's included in the acorn, the blueprint, everything the acorn needs is already in, everything the oak tree needs is already inside of the acorn. Yeah. It's already in there. But here's an interesting thing, Ani. You can take an acorn and if you leave it on your desk, it'll never turn into an oak tree, ever. All of that potential. All that gone. potential is you're just wasting it. It's wasting yeah, it's sitting on it. Yeah, desk. it's wasted potential. Yeah. Now, what does the acorn need? It needs to, well, somebody, I guess it needs to make a decision <laughs> to plant itself in rich and fertile environments. And the more rich and fertile the environments are, the more it's going to grow to fulfill its destiny. Yeah, because the desk is not the right environment for an acorn to yeah. grow. And all it takes is the right environment to activate the acorn. Exactly. That's it. It's That's just all. the right environment. Mm -hmm. Just the right environment. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty magical, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really is. Really is. Yeah. I was just thinking about our, our poor goldfish. Huh? Oh, thinking, <laughs> Lordy. Bucket. Bucket, our goldfish. Our goldfish bucket. It's about three years old and it didn't look so good the other day. Uh, we were, um, you know, wondering if bucket was sun tanning or uh, practicing to become an astronaut <laughs> like what was going on but bucket was spending some of their time upside down yeah on the top of the tank not looking <laughs> so good we're like boy bucket doesn't What's look so going good going on with bucket so we decided to just we made a powerful decision didn't we Brian <laughs> yeah powerful decision pivotal decision pivotal, pivotal it saved a, it saved a life that's we what just, we're doing Brian we changed his lives. water it just changed his water and he's like now he's like back to his old self again swimming all over the place it just he was, he'd been in that environment a little too long. Yeah, I hadn't changed the water in a little bit. So, yeah, it's a perfect example, though, right? Like, all it, I mean, literally, all it required was a water change. Mm -hmm. We changed the environment, the fish was fine. We, the, the environment wasn't okay, exactly. and it wasn't flourishing. And, you know, really think for yourself are you in environments where you are flourishing? And it doesn't mean that you don't have an acorn because everybody has an mm -hmm. acorn. Your environment might not be the right place for your acorn to take root and grow. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. And, and here also, if you have a desire, true desire for your purpose to grow, for your acorn to grow, what that also means is that the 
opportunity for that environment must be there. It must be there. That's what the law is saying. It's not separate. It is with the desire. It's just like, um, it's like kind of reminds me of the law of polarity, Brian, like the quarter, the heads and the tail of the quarter. You mm -hmm. can't separate the tail of the quarter. It's not like if you're looking at the heads, you're going, where's the tail? You know, it's there. You just have to flip it over. Like it's the same thing with the ways and the means mm -hmm. and the resources for us to fulfill our desire. They are there. We might not be able to see them at the moment, just like the tales of the quarter. And I think about this, uh, this passage and kind of two primary things pop out for me. One thing is the ways and the means show up after we make the decision, yeah. not, not before. Yeah. That's the, how the law works. And a lot of times when people are agonizing over decision, they're like, listen, I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I don't have the resources. Well, here's the thing. If that decision is in alignment with your purpose, your true desire, the, the time and the money and the resources show up after you make the decision, not before. They show up after, not before. Brian, it reminds me of when we uh, we bought the New Health Wellness Center. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> I remember. We bought a building. Yeah. We, uh, we were co-collaborating, co-owning a wellness center with another individual, and we had to move out of that center. And it was a rental, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we were leasing that space. Yeah, we were leasing the space. So it was just a, a monthly rental kind of situation. And we had to leave, and Brian and I needed to leave and recreate our wellness center. And can I just say, in a uh, an environment that looked like it couldn't possibly support another wellness center. Yes. Because we live in a place where there's just very few amount of people. What is the- 1,200 people. Year-round residents? Year-round residents, I mean, you got, you got to be kidding me. Two wellness centers in, in a place that small? And so it seemed crazy, but we, especially you, had a deep desire. To I had have, a deep desire. You had a deep desire yeah. to have a wellness center. I mean, I remember uh, your goal at the time was to make our county the healthiest county in New York State, which was silly mm -hmm. because at the time- it we were was, also one of the poorest counties in New York State. Yeah, and it was not the healthiest by by any means. And so you just had this deep desire for that. And so we need to leave the wellness center, and we needed to find another rental. Did we look for a rental? We looked all over for a rental. <laughs> there were no rentals. Nothing. No buildings. Nothing. But zero. <laughs> what we did end up finding was a building to buy, and it was actually perfect. I actually actually asked the previous owner that was a local hospital if we could rent it, and they said no. <laughs> well, it kind of it, it went against their bylaws. Okay, they, they actually couldn't they couldn't do it legally. Uh -huh. So it further pushed us into a pivotal decision. We're we're going to make a decision to stay in business. Right. Or not. And it really was that big of a deal. It was were, that big of a deal. Were we going to stay in business or not? Because we needed, we were seeing people in person at the time and we needed to have rooms to mm -hmm. be able to see our local clients. And it was literally like for you and I, get figure this out or go back to work at the hospital, which neither one of us was Wanted going to, to do. do. And and we had from the the place we were leaving, we had spent a lot of money and they're yeah. building a gym. Right. Like we had thousands equipment. We had thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment. We had a classroom. We were teaching classes. Mm -hmm. We had all these things kind of lined up to deliver. Yeah. And we needed a space where we could do all those things. And we could have, I guess we could have tried to patch it together and went to see some people in their homes and Good then gosh. sold the equipment. And But again, I had this deep desire to, this had to happen. It was it was destiny. So Felt we're like destiny. create a wellness center. We do not have a space. The only thing that looked like it was available was a building to buy. We did not have money to buy a building. <laughs> no, thank you. And by the way, we didn't have anybody else to work there at the time either, Brian. Like it was you and me in a building. Mm -hmm. It seemed crazy. The di desire was there mm -hmm. and we knew that the ways and the means to fill that desire must, must be, be there. there. We knew that they must be there. And we also knew that they wouldn't show up until after we, we made, made the decision. decision. Right. Right. So we made the decision to scrape together some funding, do, you know, get some loans and borrow money Ask from people. friends and yep. family and all this sort of thing to be able to have enough of a down payment, to mm -hmm. be able to go to the bank, to negotiate with the 
And by the way, I didn't know how to do any of this. No. I wasn't a business owner. We're, we're, I was a physical therapist. Yeah. I didn't know how to run a business and negotiate land deals and work with the local uh, agencies for zoning and all that kind of stuff. And we were fresh new business partners yeah. too, by the way. And so all of a sudden there was all of this potential responsibility on each other's shoulders and trust and coordination. We didn't know how to work together really. I remember you couldn't even show up to the signing, yeah. but it was in your name mm -hmm. because it had to be in your name. But I needed to sign for it because you were like traveling for a training. Like the whole thing was crazy. And do you remember that we got to the, toward the end of the deal where we're moving, we would already oh, sign the papers, oh, yeah, we're moving toward that. the end of the deal. And we find out like, what was There was it a then? lien. There was a second, the ho a hospital had owned it. And there was an undisclosed lien on the hospital. And the lien was by, I don't know, it was like a federal agency, like the Department of Health or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it like, wasn't even like a person. This, yeah, it was like a federal agency owned a portion of the lien on the building. And we're getting close to the closing. And by the way, we're getting kicked out of our current we space. Have, yeah, we're leaving. We're leaving. We have to. And we and we literally have people scheduled to come back we had in. Scheduled. And it was like, what are we going to do if we and it looked like all of a sudden we weren't going to be able to close on the building. And I was traveling for a consulting job that I was doing. And the people who were helping us said it's going to take months, months. Yeah. to get this. Like it was kind of like I'm sorry, but this isn't going to happen. And I don't remember why we started asking some people if they could help us. Like, I don't actually remember what that was. Maybe you do. But somehow we were talking to a friend about this mm -hmm. problem and they go, oh, I know so-and-so, the guy who holds the lien at, or, or is working for the government agency or whatever. Right. Remember that? Yep. Mm -hmm. They they happen to be personal friends with this person, like golf buddies or something. And they said, let me make a phone call for you. And it gets better from here because they made a phone call. And the, the one person who has to sign this mm -hmm. thing is going on vacation for like two or three weeks. The next day or something. In six hours. Yeah. <laughs> I remember where I was standing on Church Street in Burlington because my kids are like getting their cellos tuned or something. Mm -hmm. And I remember exactly where I was. And she's like, in six hours, he's going on vacation. Signed it off. We get the clearance. We close on time. We open on time. And ways and means. And this is, the, this is really one of those, what a difference a yes can make. One, one yes. Yes. One yes of saying, yes, we are committing to this vision. We are con committing to the desire that we have to have the healthiest county in New York State and bring this uh, wellness center to this community because this community needs it and deserves it. And that was the one yes. And then everything started to, we had to keep showing up. Let's, let's be honest. Like we had to we keep showing did. up and changing and every day and, and moving with it. But that yes led to more yeses, led to more openings, led to more doorways. It's like the universe just kept opening up doorways. And what a beautiful, I totally forgot about that example that we almost didn't close because this one person hadn't signed off and the lean and this, and it was supposed right to take months. And it was like, it just fell in place right at the end. And then we do the closing. And then as we are doing the closing, actually people start calling us yeah. to ask if they can work with us yeah. at the wellness center. Yeah, and we had the coolest team. And within a couple of weeks, we had a psychotherapist that was working with us, a uh, massage therapist, acupuncturist, yep. uh, you know, yoga, yoga teachers. teachers. I mean, all, just all, and we had an amazing group of people that helped us to create um, New Health, the wellness center in, in the town that we lived in and what an amazing, amazing experience that was. And you might be listening to this story and thinking, yeah, sure. The difference that that yes made helped you to have a wellness center. That's awesome. What a cool story. Way beyond that, this one yes mm -hmm. changed what a difference it made in all aspects of our lives. It changed everything for us. The Somatic Coaching Academy would not be here without that one yes, because we learned so much about how to be business owners, mm -hmm. how to run a team, 
I mean, we had a team at the wellness center for a few years, and then we actually, the uh, wellness center changed forms and then uh, Somatic Coaching Academy came about and we actually didn't have a team for a little while. And then we started growing a team, but we knew what to do because mm -hmm. we had a team, like we had that experience. It changed the relationships that we had as a family, mm -hmm. you and I, as, a, as uh, parents for our kids who had solid uh, employment in the community. It changed the way people perceived us in the community. Mm -hmm. It changed. Actually, we started our first training institute right after we bought that building yeah. too. Yep. Like there was, it changed everything. And when we don't always perceive, because remember human perception can perceive in parts. We don't always perceive the whole, but when you take a hot minute and you have people who can help you to see a wider perspective, you'll be able to see for yourself too, the trajectory of what a difference pivotal decision can make. Mm, absolutely. Ani. Uh, remember a couple of episodes ago, we talked about what you're really letting go of, what you're really losing when you make a powerful, pivotal decision is a limiting belief about yourself. Right. And what I'm hearing Ani uh, talk about and, and bring back up for me is that really all of those changes that we've had that we had in our life then and we've had in our life since was a letting go of a number of limiting beliefs about I can for myself at that time with that decision that well, we actually yeah, so we were much. playing so much smaller than we are capable of and we were and we had capacity to meet the universe and to be in flow with the universe and to give more to our community and to give more to other people that we hadn't have realized if we didn't say yes, that the ways and the means show up after the decision, not before the decision. That's such a critical, like that, that alone is a life changing, I not oh, idea, but practice. It's a life changing practice. practice. I think for me, it's true freedom. I really do. I think for me, that's freedom is knowing that the ways and the means for the desire is baked in mm -hmm. because it feels so trapping, confined, stuck. When a person doesn't understand that they are not free truly, Yeah, you know, um, that, that this knowledge that we're talking about and how to make powerful decisions, I think it's, I mean, maybe even the most, powerful skill I think I've developed because I really do feel like I can do anything and, and, uh, express myself in any, any way, um, and be truly free. Yeah. When we make a really pivotal life decision, that's in alignment with, I've said this, how many, how many dozens of times in these four episodes that we've done, when we make a pivotal life decision, that's truly in alignment with our true desires and what our true purpose is, that is not a decision that we're only making for ourselves as individuals. No, that's a decision we're making on on uh, part of the universe for the collective. The universe is actually asking us, begging us to make that decision because the universe is seeking expression and creation through us as people. Like that's how things are created in the human world are through humans. Humans do that creation, and how do we create this? The universe creating it, but it needs human hands in order to make those creations and because we are the universe. And so when we make a pivotal decision, it's not just about us as individuals. The universe is begging us to do it. And how many times have someone had an idea to do something and they don't do it. And then later on they read someone else did it. And they're like, they stole my idea. Like that was not their idea. That was the universe begging you. You said no. So it went to somebody else. Yeah. And somebody else said, yes, Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. Right. So the universe is begging you to make this choice. And it's we, giving you all the signs. It's giving you all the energy. It's giving you all the charge to become who you're meant to be in this world. Yeah. And we don't always get to see the ripples and ripples and ripples of impact that we make. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. In our case, a few years after we made this powerful mm -hmm. decision, I checked the mail one day and I got the paper. Front page of the paper is a cute little girl with a bunch of vegetables on a table going, yay. 
And the headline reads, Essex County, healthiest county in New York. <laughs> no joke. True story. True story. No joke. Yeah. Wow. What a powerful four episodes we've done together, Ani. Yeah. I have really appreciated uh, having this much time to sit down with you because this is the most amount of time I get to sit still with you is actually when we do these pod podcasts together. So I've really, really appreciated being here with you and having this conversation and talking about uh, the powerful and pivotal decisions that we've made in our lives and the uh, experiences that the people who, around us, our students and our clients have made pivotal decisions. It's one of the most amazing and thrilling and exciting things uh, for me to be a part of. And I want to just thank you for uh, sitting down with me to do this. Yeah, you're not lying that this really is the most, uh, we have a young family, right? And busy <laughs> young adults, I yeah. should say. And uh, boy, boy, do we have a busy life. So it has been really great. And Brian, I'm so glad that you made the decision to do this series because it's uh, it's really important information, isn't it, folks? So hey, if you're listening to this and you appreciated the series, you've learned something, please share your insights with us. We want to hear your voice. We want to hear what insights you've had, what powerful decisions you're making. Share this with other people in your life who you love. Hey, I just, you know, you might even say to yourself, I wonder who could use this today and just see what kind of pops up. Go ahead and share it with them. Even if you get a pucker moment, <laughs> we talked about that last time and, um, and share the love because we are all in co-collaboration here and we all need each other's support and wisdom and, uh, and guidance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's Thanks been really so fun. Yeah. We will see you next time. Hope you loved this series. Bye everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode. We hope that this conversation will help you improve your practice and change the way you think about your work, your clients, and yourself. Continue your exploration of trauma-sensitive somatic coaching by listening to more podcast episodes at somaticcoachingacademy.com. You could be the trusted guide that people turn to to help them with their most challenging situations and to reach their most precious goals. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.